How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Creators Process and today I'm here with Corey. How are you doing today man? I'm good man, how are you? Good, good and I'm pretty good thank you. So for everyone watching, uh, tell me what you do man. Uh, so I'm a digital art illustrator. Uh, I do commission drawings for people, uh, mainly focused around the anthropomorphic animal characters or other known as fairy characters. And yeah, I've been doing that for about, uh, say about eight, nine years. Yeah. And I guess, um, so for people who don't know, like the furry fandom, um, could you explain to everyone what it is? So basically, a f what, what a furry is, as I kind of mentioned, what, is an anthropomorphic animal. So basically it's an animal with human features. So you think of uh, characters like Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse or Disney's Robin Hood or Zootopia, Sonic the Hedgehog. That's basically a furry character, and basically what the furry fandom is, is people who make or create their own characters that are anthropomorphic, so none of the characters, I guess you find, are made by a certain uh, franchise. It's like everyone's basically their own star in the community, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like their own interpretation of their own, yeah. Yeah, so like a, like a persona, or yeah. some might call it a fursona. How did you, uh, when did you start and how did you get involved with the furry fandom? Uh, well, I was already kind of doing drawings beforehand, but I was just also doing dog drawings based off like different cartoons and some mm -hmm. anime. And I then came across some art that was done by an artist and that led me to uh, like a furry art site. And then I found all this pile of art basically around there that was basically animal art of, and I found anthropomorphic characters as well and I thought that was really cool and yeah I guess kind of adapted from there. Just kicked from there and um, so you said you started nine years ago? Yeah it's about nine years ago. That's fantastic and how has the journey been for you so far? Has it been, so tell me about what it's been like for you. Um, I mean at the start it was, well I guess it's like how most people would start off you know, people think that oh I've got a little talent here but little do you realise that you've got a lot to work on. Yeah. And I think being an artist, you've always got something to improve on. I think over the nine years I've always found something that I need to improve on. I think that's basically the main thing. Yeah. It's just, it's been an improving journey. And I've, I guess, received more attention for, like, business-wise and, yeah, and I've found plenty of friends through the work as well and good people. Oh, that's awesome yeah. and so you said that you've started to get more paid gigs and commissions and all that, how long did it take for you to get started with the commission work? So I started off doing like free requests and that's quite common for some artists to just start out. I think it was about like two, three years I was doing that for and about end of 2014, so of 2015 I got one odd commission and within a few months it turned to a couple of commissions every month or so and then it then became like a commission every month and then it was two a month and yeah now I basically uh, have like an opening or if I can because I'm a student as well usually I open about five to ten slots a month and usually they they get full up. Oh that's amazing. So, so. That's pretty awesome that you're able to fill up those spots as soon as you open it up. But there's a lot of other artists that <laughs> fill up within like 10 seconds, you know, the whole South Park yeah. thing, and it's gone. It's, it's magically so. gone. <laughs> so, how many commissions do you think you've done throughout the time you've lost count? Oh, it'd be, just, well, within the last five years, I've probably done about somewhere between 100 and 200 commissions. Wow, so, <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. How long do you think it roughly takes for you to complete just one of the commission works? Uh, if I did a commission like non-stop, like without no breaks or anything or sleep, it'd probably take me, for me, it'd be about like six to eight hours. But obviously there'd be like breaks and if there's like days where I can't work on anything, Mm -hmm. come up with the most. So yeah. if I'm on a good roll, it'll take me like a day or two to finish the commission. Fantastic. So when you uh, someone initially messages you and 
do do they have an initial idea of what they want, and do you have like different, uh, I guess, rates for what you know, like depending on what character they want and how they want the setting and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it? definitely. So I, so obviously they pitch to me the idea that they want, and not all the ideas I accept, but most I do. Yes, absolutely. Uh, but uh, I guess the rates are more based on what type of quality. Like, do you want it as just like a sketch piece or a just a normal flat? Coloured art piece, you want to shade it on it, do you want a background, how many characters do you want in the piece? I think that's basically what it comes down to with figuring out the rates. Okay, fair enough. And then you just go from there. Yep. From rates. And so I have to ask, has there been a commission that you would probably like if someone was to commission you something similar to that you would never do again? <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, so there was one uh, one commission that I got that was actually from a friend of mine, uh, he wanted all of his characters and all of my characters in the same piece, and it was roughly about 30, and you know, it was, it was a good idea, but it wasn't so much that I hated it or anything, but I think because it took so much time to, and it was a full wow. shaded pick background, and I think by the time it was done, I had spent so many days working on it, I think I was just sick of looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I'm still, I still just don't want to look at it now. Not as a, I don't think it's a bad art piece, and I don't dislike the idea. I just because I spent so many days working on, I just got sick of it. I, I guess because you keep looking at something for so long, and you just realize how much time and effort you put into it, yeah. you, you just kind of go, ah, oh, damn, that was a lot of pain <laughs> to yeah. go through that. And <laughs> jeez, that, that's it. amazing. Thirty, jeez, that's that's like me photographing thirty people in the one shot like that would be hard. <laughs> you have that's... to sit right across. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> no, that's it. So when you started doing um, the the furry fandom and joining the furry fandom, mm -hmm. was it, um, like, I, I know a lot of the times, like, especially as you probably know with my photography and my modelling work, sometimes it can be hard for me to talk about it because a lot of people don't get it and sometimes they don't understand it. Yeah. Do you find that people sometimes, like, you're a bit unsure about who to tell when you do the fairy fandom and all that, or you, you know? Uh, well, I guess with different people, you can tell them about it, but I guess some people might not understand certain things, so you kind of have to put it in a general way. Yeah. It's not, it's not so much that I care about what they think, it's just mm. some things might be just over their head. So do you get asked a lot of weird questions and all that sort of thing? Yeah, well, I think obviously because the furry fandom extends not just from art, but also like the fursuits, and obviously they have all that thing about the stereotypes that people in the furry fandom do. Mm -hmm. I guess that's questions that I've been asked, and, you know, most of the time they're not really that accurate, and some are in ways accurate, but not to the majority a, of an them, extreme yeah. extent mm -hmm. that they originally think it's been put in. So it's, you know, at the end of the day, you're all there to just enjoy the art form and just to enjoy? Yeah, at least for me, anyway, also, I'm not, I'm not, I like the fursuits and stuff too, and there's music, there's people, there's musicians, there's wow. actors, there's, there's, a, there's plenty of different professions that can be... Uh, so it expands yeah. a lot of areas, that's, that's yeah. really awesome. Talking about the conventions, because you said that there's a, I think I remember you telling me a few times that there are conventions, do you go to many of these conventions? Yeah, so I, I used to go to this one in Melbourne which was called Convergence, but that's not, that's not on anymore, that hasn't been on for the last couple of years. It, but now there's one in Gold Coast called Ferry Down Under or Furdu and that's really the one I attend now. Yep. So yeah. there's, there's a couple of others I've thought of as well, but that's... For future, right? For the future. Absolutely, and so what's the experience like there? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pretty good, but I think the whole point is just you know, meeting up with your friends that you've met and just enjoying yourself, whether it's within the con space where you're looking at art, where you're looking at like, panels, because there's panels at the yep. conventions as well, or shows, like variety shows, or if it's outside the con space, like you're just going somewhere nice to eat, you know, you could, or go to the beach, so uh, there's, like, if you're near a beach, that is, but uh, yeah. yeah, there's different things. Fantastic, and uh, so when it comes to, like, I guess people who are watching who are interested in this art form or is like interested in doing this art form, do you have any advice you'd give to them of how to start or you know what it, what is a good starting point? Yeah. You know, uh, 
you know, it's never too late to start. And you know, if you think, like, if you really want to do art and you think you're bad at it, don't let that stop you because I was once a starting artist and I thought I was really bad. But over the years, you know, I've developed into who I am today. I still definitely don't think I'm the best artist ever, but I've gotten a long way from when I started still and I think any artist can say this, and I'm pretty sure I said this before, is that every artist always has something to improve on. Like, there's no perfect artist out there. Absolutely, and I think the best artists are always the ones that say that they always are learning something new every day when they do the art form. Mm. And I guess if you want to look more into uh, learning how to draw, like at least figures, you could do tutorials, and you can find them on places like DeviantArt, Tumblr, or you can look up online or in person life drawing classes, anything that can help you, you know, to develop those realistic skills and uh, figures of whatever it is you want to draw. Fantastic. Um, so, and, and anyone can do it if you can put the effort and the dedication to making sure you can get to that spot. Absolutely. As you said, it's the commitment. You've got to just keep not, you know, keep committing to it and just not giving up. Have you had times where you've had, you know, negative feedback and all that? Like, has there been any times where that's been um, something? I've had, like, maybe one or two that have been somewhat negative, but one of them, unfortunately, was kind of something I heard from someone else that they've told someone else about me and that person happened to be a friend of mine and they um, talked to me about it but okay. I think apart from that it's been relatively constructive that's all that's and good. you know I think if, if you get feedback you want it to be honest I think yeah, at the end of the absolutely. day and you know and most of it will be constructive and whether you want to see that as constructive or negative you know, I guess that's up to each person but I always take you know, each criticism as a also another pointer to where I should hmm, improve my skills. When it comes to future projects, do you have anything lined up? Uh, I guess I have a few uh, personal character things like I've got commission works I'm still working on as well. Uh, but I've also got some uh, graphic design projects as well because I work as a graphic designer as well and I'm a design student. But uh, yeah, there's, there's a few coming up that are still in the works. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to seeing some more fantastic art from you. Yeah. And yeah, I want to say thank you for taking the time to talk on my channel. No worries. And Anytime. I want to say a big thank you to everyone who watched this episode. I will leave a all Corey's links to all of his art, um, deviant art, all that sort of stuff, in the link description. Comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode.